We dream of discovering distant worlds, overflowing with rich vegetation and life just like here on Earth. The James Webb Space Telescope has now discovered a real atmosphere on a distant super-Earth for the first time. We could therefore be well on the way to finally exploring a world similar to our own in the depths of space. But 55 Cancri E presents researchers with a puzzle. The exo-world, which is only 41 light-years away from Earth, sometimes appears as a super-Earth and sometimes as a hellish furnace. But which is true? The James Webb Telescope has made some astonishing discoveries in the search for answers to these questions. Researchers are using NASA's new JWST to finally take a close look at the Earth-like planet 55 Cancri E with the help of this groundbreaking technology. This exoplanet is a direct neighbor of Earth on a cosmic scale. This world has astonished researchers time and again since its discovery in 2011. At first, the planet appeared to be a hot but rocky world that may have an atmosphere, but then scientists discovered shocking new data about this planet. Using Webb's unique methods of analysis, researchers wanted to finally unravel the mystery surrounding this mysterious planet, and they succeeded. The results are astounding, and the study leader, Ren Yu Hu, from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory was thrilled. With the James Webb Telescope, we are now entering a completely new dimension of science. For the first time, we know exactly what is going on around the exoplanets, and we can even get our first impressions of the planet's surface. 55 Cancri E, Super Hot or Super Earth? Can you imagine a boiling hot Super Earth? Probably not, and that's absolutely right, because normally only planets that offer even better living conditions than our home are called super-Earths. As a rule, such planets are a little larger, a little denser, a little warmer, and their stars have a longer life expectancy than our Sun. The first two points applied to 55 Cancri E for a long time. We knew the size of the planet, its orbit, and its approximate density. However, we had no concrete data on an atmosphere, and even the temperatures were only estimates. Never before in the history of astronomy have we been able to study planets outside our solar system with such precision and detail. Webb spectrometers can not only detect water in a planet's environment, but also gases such as methane, carbon dioxide, and other volatile compounds. The more similar the analysis data of the planet's environment is to the values of our Earth, the more certain we are that we have found a real super-Earth. 55 Cancri E is one of five known Earth-like planets orbiting the Sun-like star 55 Cancri. With a diameter almost twice that of Earth and a higher density, the planet was previously classified as a super-Earth. Earlier studies of 55 Cancri E yielded strangely contradictory information. For example, studies by the Spitzer Space Telescope showed that the planet orbits its star so closely that its surface is probably less rocky and more molten. Furthermore, the planet's orbit is probably bound. With a day side and a night side, the supposed super-Earth could be a scorching hot place that neither harbors an atmosphere nor can support life. Researchers have repeatedly taken on this strange world and specialists from the University of New Mexico have now studied 55 Cancri E intensively for more than 10 years. The scientists described it as downright frustrating that none of the observations had so far yielded clear results. The new telescope should finally bring light into the darkness and reveal the secrets of this planet. 55 Cancri E has two atmospheres. Is it possible for a planet to have two atmospheres? Yes, 55 Cancri E once had an atmosphere, which was then blown away by its star. It's almost unbelievable, because this mutable planet simply grew a new atmosphere. The spectrometer analysis surprised scientists. They had never had such detailed and extensive data on this planet before. Using the latest data, the researchers were able to accurately reconstruct the history of 55 Cancri E's atmosphere, and it is truly strange. Due to its extreme proximity to its star, surface temperatures of around 2400 degrees Celsius have literally burned away the protective shell. But this exoplanet performed a miracle and simply replaced the original atmosphere of hydrogen and helium with a new one. This secondary atmosphere was formed in a fantastic way 
by outgassing from the rocky interior of the planet. It was probably the high temperature at 55 Cancri E that caused a new atmosphere to form. However, the new atmosphere is quite different and consists mainly of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Webb's Most Accurate Spectrometer Analysis Do you wonder how the JWST can detect such details? The light that reaches us from 55 Cancri E is so small that Webb could never take a direct image of this planet. However, the telescope can measure minute changes in the system's light as the planet orbits the star. The data from the MIRI instrument show the 55 Cancri system's brightness decreasing as the rocky planet, 55 Cancri E, moves behind its star. Scientists refer to this phenomenon as a secondary eclipse, and the images of the analysis diagram show a secondary eclipse light curve. During a secondary eclipse, the light reflected or emitted by the planet is obscured so that only the light from the star is measured. By comparing the brightness before and during the eclipse, the amount of light coming from the planet can be isolated and analyzed. The data show a clear drop in brightness caused by the planet's emissions. Analysis of these emissions revealed that the temperature on the day side of the planet is about 1,540 degrees Celsius, which is much lower than expected and indicates a volatile rich atmosphere that distributes energy from the day side to the night side. Absolutely crazy, life on 55 Cancri E? It sounds crazy, but previous data from NASA's now defunct Spitzer Space Telescope repeatedly indicated the presence of an atmosphere with signs of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. These could be biomarkers and evidence of life. But how can it be that a planet with such extreme surface temperatures shows traces of biomarkers in its atmosphere? Planetary researcher Hugh explained in his article in the journal Nature that 55 Cancri E even showed signatures of metallic substances and elements such as silicon, iron, aluminum, and calcium. However, the temperatures are so high that scientists suspect that the source of these traces could be a thin veil of vaporized rock. This raises the exciting question of whether this planet was once cooler and knew biological processes. We know from our own solar system that planets have swapped positions within the system over the course of millions of years. It's possible that the rocky world 55 Cancri E was once in a habitable zone and only later moved into an orbit that brought it closer to its star and the devastating temperatures. Our Mercury is also being pushed further and further towards the Sun by Jupiter, and some researchers assume that Mercury was once in an orbit further away from the Sun. Then it could be that there was once life on 55 Cancri E. The exoplanet appears more and more like a world of stark contrasts and a world that has undergone violent changes. This is shown not only by the bound orbit, but above all by the contradictory measurement results from the various telescopes. The first indication of a considerable atmosphere came from temperature measurements based on the thermal emissions of this world. If the exoplanet is really covered by dark, molten rock and a thin veil of vaporized rock, the day side should be about 2200 degrees hot. Webb's MIRI data, however, showed a temperature of only 1540 degrees Celsius. This may be due to the fact that the energy is well distributed by thermal processes between the cool night side and the hot day side. Lava flows transfer heat to the night side where it is circulated and cooled. Nevertheless, simulations showed that this effect alone is not sufficient to explain the much lower temperature. When the research team examined further data from Webb's NIRCAM, patterns of a volatile but rich atmosphere were again revealed. This does not fit with a planet made of vaporized rock. The team led by planetary scientist Hugh has come to the conclusion that 55 Cancri E has some special feature that must have something to do with the escape of gases from its interior. Thanks to Webb, research into this exciting planet has come a long way, but is still far from complete. Real Traces of Life in Space are you fascinated by such groundbreaking findings as those about 55 Cancri E? Or are you one of those people who would be much more grateful if we could finally prove the existence of real extraterrestrial life in space? 
Even if we have not yet succeeded in providing definitive proof, the James Webb Space Telescope has brought us closer to this goal than ever before. In addition to an unprecedented range and sharpness, the JWST offers us the opportunity to take a close look at exoplanets for the first time. Although some of these planets are huge, they are tiny objects compared to the dimensions of the entire universe. For a long time, tracking them down was like looking for a needle in an almost infinite haystack. We now know of more than 5,000 exoplanets. That's a lot for our science, but measured against the actual number of planets, it's not even a handful. The exact number of Earth-like planets is constantly changing. So far, we have a few dozen candidates that have what it takes to be Earth-2. Webb is now to clarify which planets are really Earth-like and which are not. Proxima Centauri b has often been named as the most Earth-like planet. This planet, which is only four light-years away, orbits the star closest to us and lies in the habitable zone, where the conditions for liquid water are good. Our hopes of finding life there faded after the star Proxima Centauri directed violent flares at its planet. After this disappointment, attention turned to other important candidates such as Kepler 452b and Trappist 1e. Webb was able to confirm the existence of the Earth-like planets in the TRAPPIST system, but the individual analyses are still lacking. The star TRAPPIST-1 probably has seven planets around it, five of which are similar to our Earth. Kepler-452b is currently the most Earth-like planet ever discovered in space. It is around 6 billion years old and slightly larger than our home planet. Here too, we currently know nothing about an atmosphere or signs of biomarkers in the environment. We will have to wait until the JWST analyzes this world in detail. Click subscribe now and look forward to many new exciting videos.